You have arrived at your destination. Digital Street is to your right. Welcome back to Digital Street, aka your girl's favorite podcast. So if it's your first time here, we literally own a street in the metaverse called Digital Street. And every week, Sadra and I meet up over here to battle gatekeepers by learning and teaching you guys about the rapidly evolving tech and business landscape so that you don't fall behind and so that we don't fall behind either. Well said, Marzouk. So this week, we have a lot of good stuff for you. Uh, first of all, we're going to talk about some NVIDIA AI news that was on display at their annual event as well. And then from there, we're going to talk about their specific cloud infrastructure that they came with and the specific softwares that was uh, implemented in that cloud infrastructure. And then we're going to go to our digital outlier segment. So last week we had AI or human made. So this week it's, uh, it's a fuck, man. What? <laughs> I've, that's so ass. It's okay. Just continue. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, we're going to talk about digital outliers, <laughs> everyone. Woo-hoo. Yeah, so, like, what? <laughs> so, Andre and I had a late night, so, like, both of us, well, not together, but hey, yo. Like, separately. <laughs> Hello, man, but, come on. Yeah, exactly. But, yes, so we're going to talk about NVIDIA AI news, and then, <laughs> at the start, I also want to update you guys on our podcast situation like IRL pods and like stuff like that. So we'll quickly do that before we start. And then also at the end, like our, we're going to do our bi-weekly segment of Digital Outlier. And this week it's going to be on Mark and Dreesen, which is a badass in Silicon Valley. Yeah, I guess we could get started with that quick update. So from my side, I, I just want to tell, I wanted to tell you guys about um, our IRL pod setup. <clears throat> So, yeah, after today's pod, Sadra and I are just going to figure out how we're going to set up the entire IRL pod. And, yeah, it will probably be at one of our houses for, for now, not, like, at some studio. <laughs> it's going to be on rich. the Digital Street Studio. Yeah, exactly. In the metaverse. In the metaverse. But, yeah, I expect some, like, better quality for both audio and video pretty soon. And... Yeah, expect more fun pods because IRL, uh, Sadra and I will like be able to have more fun, no homo, together. I don't, I didn't have to say no homo there, but like under the table fun. <laughs> yeah, even though there's gonna be no table. <laughs> oh, <it's> okay. <laughs> okay. But yeah. <laughs> All right. That, that's an update for the IRL pod. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you described it pretty well. I don't really have anything much to say. I mean, even after then, we're still going to keep looking to improve everything in any way that we can. It's just like, it's not just like we're going to do this and we're going to stay like static in terms of improvement. We're always going to keep trying to look to improve anything we can. And um, yeah, I guess we can get started with the NVIDIA AI news. So NVIDIA had an event recently where they kind of discussed... um, Usually they discuss their new software updates and like GPUs, but since we're in an AI bubble right now, everyone's tech events is literally just about AI. So this week, the CEO and founder of NVIDIA uh, came out during the event and had some very good um, news about how they're going to implement AI and what they've done in the AI space. So we're just going to quickly glance over that for you. So you, you're kept in the loop. And so that we're kept in loop too. <laughs> so first, they discussed um their their su- their, their AI supercomputer and how they're gonna implement that in a cloud infrastructure. Um. So first, I'm gonna talk a little bit about how the AI computer works, that supercomputer. So as you probably know, Nvidia is big on GPUs, and like computer GPUs, like they're the main provider of GPUs, RTX, GTX, GT, all that is NVIDIA. So they came out with their own GPUs a while back, the H100 module module GPUs. And with these GPUs, they're specifically made for AI supercomputers because you can connect them and they'll work as one big GPU. So once you connect eight H100 model GPUs 
that turns the actual computer and the actual computer is called DGX H100. And they have an infrastructure that connects hundreds of DGX 800s, 800, sorry, H100 computers together. And then that turns into a supercomputer. And then from there, that supercomputer, they have like eight or seven in their own factory. So as you can see, there's a lot of te technology in terms of hardware and availability for them to kind of build, build supercomputers in their factories. And the best part, sorry, my Zoom screen disappeared. The best part about that is that they're going to make this all available on cloud. So they actually gave one supercomputer to the first ever AI supercomputer that they built. They gave it to, to OpenAI, which they actually used to kind of power their different engines like GPT-3 and GPT-4. And then, but they're also going to make this available on the cloud infrastructure. I don't know how much you guys know about the cloud infrastructure. I would say I have a basic understand of, understanding of it, of like the different services available on the cloud. But with the cloud infrastructure, you basically get access to the computers uh, without having to go there and purchase a physical computer. You can just go online and I don't know how it works through a membership or service you can purchase to have access to their infrastructure through the cloud. And just one more thing about this. Once you purchase that cloud infrastructure, you get access to their built-in AI models. There's one for like every category and you can actually build your own AI models based on your own data, on your own, like in your own organization. So think of it as a template when you get it, and then you can modify it to your liking for your organization. There's three main AI services that they talked about in the event. One of them is called Nemo. Nemo is used for large language models. So when you think of ChatGPT and how we're using that, that is powered by the GP3, GPT-3 language model. So things like that were like for chatbots or generative AI language, those use la large language models. So you can use that specific service within the cloud infrastructure if you want to build your own large language model for your business. Another service they have is Picasso, which is kind of the, kind of the same thing, but this is more for visual purposes. So you can create custom visual applications from it. They partner with Adobe and Getty Images. So from there, you can create custom 3D visuals and anything like that for your business. And finally, this one I'm a little less familiar with because it's about biology and I don't really know much about biology. But they mentioned BioNemo, which is for biology, obviously. It's a mix of the Nemo uh, large language model that I talked about in the first place and biology. So it's an AI drug discovery tool. You can kind of build your own 3D molecular structures with this service. Like I said, I don't really know how biology works. I hate it. Of course, it you, high don't, you don't get any bitches. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. Oh my god! <laughs> nice dude, thank you for roasting me in front of all our viewers. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong, but yeah, great. Yeah, we, we don't Where get. Was I? We don't. <laughs> nice. It's okay. Dude. We're we're hello. We're hello. True. We're hello. <laughs> You, you <laughs> no, were saying something about biology and that biology platform. That was good. That was spontaneous. I like it. We need more of this in our, yeah, we do. maybe not those exact words, but we need more of spontaneous <laughs> in our podcast. True, true. So, yeah, I mean, that's basically what I had to say about it. <laughs> um, yeah, like, yeah, there's more softwares too. I think there's one for cybersecurity, another one for like uh off the top of my head i don't remember many but there's a lot for visual audio science cybersecurity, networking there's a software for everything on their cloud infrastructure and i think if they pull this off well it could be huge if and if, if every organization's every organization gets to use their <clears throat> cloud infrastructure i think it's going to be great for the future of ai and businesses yeah it's going to be insane like i was just watching that video that you sent me and like I was, I was seeing like some of the AI generated videos, like I I've seen them around before too. And they just put like videos that are like commonly around the internet. And like most of us have already seen, but video is complete, completely generated with AI. Right. And they look like, like cartoons in the early days. And I was just thinking like soon enough, maybe in five years or so since like the AI since AI is evolving so quickly, like we might even see people create like, like Disney using NVIDIA software to create an entire movie 
completely with AI, like the animations and yeah, all of the graphics, the storytelling, of course, like that needs creativity. Yeah, definitely. Um, there's this that's actually been done, not in terms of Disney, but in terms of video game. Uh, there was a video game tool that I wanted to talk about, but I did do a a short on it on Instagram, a reel on it. So if you want to check that out, check out our Instagram at Digital Street Pod. And yeah, so I was I was about to say the Unreal Engine Five is a is an engine for video games, and they're very heavily focused towards AI, and their Unreal is amazing in terms of graphics. So I think, like you were saying, like if Disney tries to use Nvidia's uh, AI tools, it's gonna be great. But I think Unreal is working towards that, like using AI more and more for their upcoming games. So I think, yeah, you're right. That's going to be great if different kind of organizations try to try to use that for their benefit. Yeah, and it was pretty insane. Like everyone was talking about Nvidia's rise, like meteoric rise. Like they they went from like I don't know where they were at in like the 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 largest company ranks, but now they're ranked at like six for the largest company in the world. I think. What did they reach like a trillion dollars in evaluation or something? Yeah, they like uh, they doubled or something within yeah very little time. Yeah, that was insane. And I I bet it's going to just continue to increase, right? Yeah, definitely with their CEO that you know we might do a digital outlier on. You never know. Facts. Shadowing again. Yo, digital outlier. We gotta freaking like have him on the pod eventually. Eventually. <laughs> eventually like we we're talking about like decades you know hopefully he's still alive by then but yeah <laughs> you never know with ai he might have like a super computer in his brain that does everything for him yeah yo i saw when i went to the u.s last week i saw this like cryo cryogenics or something like um clinic and you do you know what cryogenics is or i don't know i don't know if i'm even saying it right I think it it's uh, it's like to keep your body young, right, or something like that. Like it's something like that. So, yeah, you basically like freeze your body after you pass away, and oh, okay. Pe- some people think that you could, uh, re- like bring your body back to life. Oh, I see. It, I don't believe in it because that's just my belief system. But yeah, like you never know. Some people like this might try um cryogenics. Is so it's not ready yet, right? To be Im- implemented into actual humans or have actual humans already done it? No, no one's actually done it before. No one's done it yet. But what I think like there's no way to bring the soul back into the body. Like, it's just impossible to me. But what could be done is like an AI or something that that powers the human body back up some way. But I, honestly, <laughs> it it's, must, must take like at least like 50 years to do something like that. God damn, 50 years. Because they need to like, they need to bring back, but they need to bring life back to like your physical body right like imagine all of the biology breakthroughs that need to be in place for that to be possible oh so you're when, when you enter the machine or whatever you're already dead yeah i thought it was like you're like about to die but they freeze you so they, they oh. keep that no like you're literally dead oh yeah i don't know i don't know how mm. yeah that would go against a lot of beliefs yeah and yeah that's weird i also wanted to touch upon are you really familiar with like different cloud services not in ai just in general like sa like SaaS, and what was the SAS? other one yeah do you, do you know SaaS like software as a service yeah do you know any other ones inside the cloud service world um Like there's I I as I guess infrastructure as a service. I know that one. 
Uh, what are some like example companies that are IaaS? I don't <laughs> I, I don't really know much about cloud. I was about I was actually about to like I was actually about to study on my own time about cloud because it's important for the like job industry I want to go into. But mm -hmm. I was about to say um like software as a service, it means like it it doesn't it provides like half of the utilities. Like you still need to provide you, you still need to take care of some things from your own organization, but you can buy out some other things from the cloud provider. Is that correct? So software as a service is like, for example, like Twitch is a software, right? That could be seen as a software as a service, which like their service is live video streaming, right? Mm. That's that's just their service, and they probably use IaaS like infrastructure uh, as a services businesses, and like okay, their business itself is just like SaaS is just like that type of business where they offer a service to people. They offer software as a service. It's just simply as a oh. I guess we're talking about different different things. That's okay. Maybe. I mean, yeah, that's good to know. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, that's all I had to say about NVIDIA. I think it's kind of cool that they provide you a template where you can use that template within, within their cloud to build your own models for AI. Like you can put your own data and then from there you can put your own, you can train your own large language models. You can train your different AI generative tools. It's kind of cool. Yeah, and they also had this this um tool for um warehouses or something like uh, manufacturing companies, where they could create a virtual manufacturing warehouse or process on on their cloud software, which basically tests all of their manufacturing systems on the cloud before they actually implement it in real life to prevent any like massive um costs and like failures before they actually like bring in all of that equipment for hire all of those people to run the equipment and all and yeah it seemed pretty cool to me that they have that offering yeah i remember yeah i remember you showed me that um i think in general automation is where we can strive towards to for businesses to be even more profitable than before because that's a yeah. that's a pretty big thing if you can kind of map, map out your like your your factories and how your infrastructure inside of there is going to work it can definitely save you it can definitely save you a lot of money in the long run yeah 100 percent. that video that you sent me do you think the the founder while he was speaking like was do you think he was looking away at some script while he was speaking and then he just used like adobe's technology to to make his correct his eyes um like position. like the ceo yeah there's some people in the comments that says that this <laughs> the, the guy wasn't even there we're just 100 percent ai that was giving the presentation <laughs> but that's interesting yeah i mean they they have a tool nvidia has a tool where like if you implement it on your webcam you cannot look at the you cannot look at the webcam, look at the screen, and like it makes it, it makes it seem like you're looking at the webcam. Oh, Nvidia like, owns that tool. I thought it was Adobe. Maybe they both have one, but I'm I'm hundred percent positive that Nvidia has one. Damn. Yeah, maybe he was using that. Maybe that's like one cool thing to think about, and kind of like, like I wish it, this technology was there when we were younger too, but. Like there's so many AI content creators and and no not AI content creators like AI <laughs> profiles that like people are using to create um <laughs> like social media profiles like so basically the social media person that they're profiling is just an AI. And all of the like the videos or whatever they do with that AI profile, it's just like they just have to generate with the AI and they post it. Oh, okay, I see, I see. 
So, so I mean, they are content creators then. Yeah. So like, suppose there's a there's a shy kid in the future that wants to create content, wants to make like bank off of content, or just wants to like create a community. You could just use an AI to do it, and like it would be so easy to create a following when there's like no risk of like potentially ruining your own reputation or like for someone that's shy like um like us being... <laughs> somewhat yeah but we're overcoming it true exactly gotta become men you know come hey <laughs> hey yo <laughs> hey, yo but yeah that that'd be pretty something that's pretty cool in the future that I'm pretty sure that there's gonna be a bunch of like AI content creators um that humans are actually running. That'd be very nice indeed. Yep. So do you want to transition into digital outlier now? Yeah, for sure. I don't you kinda of went over everything I had to say. Okay, sick. All right, so this week, I, I know last week we just went off the go and we just spoke a bit about, or not last week, I think it was t- two or three weeks ago, spoke about Balaji and like his his life and his career. We just spoke about it on the go. But this week I wrote up a description about Mark and Reeson and it'll be like, it's a write-up, so I'm just going to be reading it and I... I'm only doing that because I don't want to miss anything anymore. And for all of these profiles, I want it to be impactful. And at the moment, my like I can't really like memorize any script pro- like as I'd like to. And like I'm not the best presenter, so but I'm really good at writing, and that's what I do like every day. So I I wrote up a description about him, and I'll, I'm gonna talk about that with you guys all right so Martin Dreesen the Silicon Valley tycoon was born on July 9 1971 in Cedar Falls Iowa in the US and he grew up in a middle-class family and Dreesen's father worked as a seed corn salesman and his mother was a homemaker their income allowed them to provide for provide for the family's basic needs and support Andreessen's educational pursuits, but they were not in a position to afford extravagant luxuries. Growing up, growing up in a middle class household, likely influenced Andreessen's up, upbringing and shaped his values and work ethic. But it's worth noticing that noting that his access to a computer at an early age shows that his family had the means to invest in technology and support his interests. But it's also important to consider that his success in the technology industry was primarily driven by his talent, determination, and entrepreneurial spirit, rather than a privileged background or substantial financial resources. He seized opportunities, leveraged his skills, and made significant contributions to the field, ultimately establish- establishing himself as a prominent figure in the technology and venture capital sectors. So as a child, Andreessen demonstrated a keen interest in technology and computers from an early age. So at the age of eight, he received his first computer, which his family bought him, of course. And it was a Commodore 64. So I don't know much about that computer, but yeah, that computer sparked his curiosity and set the stage for his future endeavors, which are insane. Like, you just got to hear about it. So, yeah, he spent a bunch of count- countless hours learning about the computer that he just got gifted from his family. And he continued that during high school. So he was in, he enrolled in New Lisbon High School in, in Wisconsin. And... He just continued to learn about technology and took advantage of the courses at his school. So he used to go to the school's computer lab and he learned basic program. He learned programming languages like basic and Pascal, which are old programming languages. Some people still use it. And he also participated in 
of a bunch of science fairs. So after high school, Andreessen enrolled at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, UIUC, in 1989. And there he pursued a bachelor's of science um, in computer science. And at UIUC, Andreessen gained access to cutting edge computer systems and resources, allowing him to further expand his knowledge and skills. The one pivotal event during Andreessen's time at UIUC was his involvement in the creation of Mosaic, the first widely used web browser, which some of you might know about. Most of you probably don't, but yeah, that was where it all started. So alongside his colleague, Eric Bina, and recent played a crucial role in developing Mosaic, which re revolutionized the way people interacted with the internet. And Mosaic paved the way for the modern web and marked the beginning of Andreessen's profound impact on the technology landscape. After graduating from UIUC in 1993, Andreessen co-founded Mosaic Communications Corporation, which later became Netscape. Netscape Navigator, the company's flagship product, became one of the most influential web browsers of its time. Its IPO in 1995 was, was a significant milestone in the history of the internet, generating enormous interest and in fueling the dot-com boom. Andreessen had the advantage of receiving mentorship and guidance from experienced individuals throughout his career, some being Jim Clark, who is the founder of Silicon Graphics, and he he played a crucial role in Andreessen's early success. And he he provided financial support and guidance to to Mark while he founded Mosaic Communications. Just I'm just gonna call it Mosaic, but which later became Netscape. And yeah, mentorship from these seasoned entrepreneurs like James Barkdale as well, who was the CEO of Netscape had a tremendous impact on his career and life. So I see many patterns of people working for their mentors when they're young, like Nikola Tesla and, and Ford worked for Edison, Sam Walton, founder of Walmart, the founders of Home Depot, the founder of Target, and the founder of Kmart, and probably many more retail store owners work for Soul Price, who was the retail luminary who founded FedMart and Price Club, which became Costco. And today I see people in my network, working for people like Naval Ravikant and Furkan Ridhan, who are both massively successful billionaires. So continuing on, Andreessen's company, Netscape, was acquired by AOL in 1999 for $4.3 billion. Then he went on to found LoudCloud, which became Opsware. And Mark Andreessen and Ben Horowitz launched LoudCloud as a managing host managed hosting provider so it just provided a bunch of it infrastructure and stuff and yeah soon after that in july 2002 they, they did an ipo and raised 100 million dollars from their ipo and that was just a common thing in that day like these days people just raise investment rather than ipoing to raise investment and yes five Five years later, in 2007, HP acquired Opsware for approximately $1.6 billion. And Opsware's technology and automation solutions, along with the Mark's vision, left in like a profound impact on the IT infrastructure management space. And the company's approach to automating and optimizing data center operations influenced the industry and helped pave the way for cloud computing and increase adoption of DevOps practices. So at this point, this man is probably worth upwards of a billion dollars, but he doesn't see any reason to stop there. That's the beauty of the game. If you love the game and create balance with your life within your life so that you don't sacrifice family and friends for the game, you can play the game for forever and reap the benefits of compounding. After this, he transitioned into venture capital and co-founded Andreessen Horowitz with Ben Horowitz, or better known as A16Z, a prominent Silicon Valley venture capital firm in, 2000, in 2009. That 16 in A16Z might represent how many girls he got from his past success to that point. But... <laughs>
But yeah, at A16Z, he's funded and supported numerous successful technology companies, including Facebook, Twitter, Airbnb, and Lyft, among others. I'm not sure if you guys remember, but in episode nine, we spoke about Balaji. He's actually a general partner at A16Z. And so A16Z is pretty bullish on crypto. And as you know, as I just told you, Market and Ben have deep roots in Web 1 and Web 2. And now they're bullish on Web 3 as well. So in addition to his venture capital activities, Andreessen has been an active entrepreneur as well and serves on the board of several technology companies. He's known for his insightful writings on technology and business, often expressing his views through like blog posts and interviews. And I'll include this in the description, but you could find his writing at pmarchive.com. It's just a bunch of banger content. But yeah, Mark Andreessen's childhood provided the foundation for his remarkable career in technology and his early exposure to computers coupled with his relentless curiosity and passion for programming set the stage for groundbreaking contributions to the internet and the tech and the tech industry as a whole. Woo! Let's go. Very good speech for Zoom. Thank you, thank you. Photography. Yeah, it's definitely a lot of information at once, but um I think you made a good way to like we kind of retain everything. I really liked uh two things that I really liked is how he went uh to his high school's computer lab to to work on his programming skills, things like basic. Which actually I, I had some experience with basic during high school. I don't know why. It's yeah. like a ninety years old language. I don't know why we would be doing that. I also liked how you that little um relation between Balaji, A sixteen Z and then here to Mark Mark relation. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. That that part where like founders working for their mentors was like one of my favorite parts. Like I see that everywhere where people are working for people they admire. And yeah, that's, that's just one real like sound way to become successful in life. That's facts. I mean it makes sense, right? Like the environment you put yourself in is how you're going to either grow or diminish, right? And if you put yourself with people that you aspire to be like, you're probably going to be like them. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I think we should do our ending call quickly and then and I'll say the final words. we got one minute Perfect. left. Is it, is it my turn? Yeah. Okay, I, ha I have one. Yeah. Too often, we enjoy the comfort of opinions without the discomfort of thought. Too often, we enjoy the comfort Discom of, of opinions without the discomfort of thought. Damn, so we don't allow ourselves to think about those opinions? Yeah, or... we kind of get we kind of get too high on the opinions and there's no like self-reflection going on. Mm, I like that. That was really sure. good. Thank Did you, you come up with that on the spot? Uh, I always have one ready. I don't know if it's my turn sometimes, but I always have one ready. So that's the one I had ready that time. Oh, okay. Yeah, I like that a lot. But yeah, I just wanted to say this week, I'm I'm not going to say the same thing that I usually say because I just wanted to switch it up. Yeah, I like if you guys are listening on uh, YouTube or Spotify, just drop a comment because we love speaking with you guys. And yeah, it just shows us that people really like our stuff. But yeah, that's about it for this week. See you guys next week. See you next week at Digital Street, you know it's love, yo! Thanks, Deep Fake Tupac. Respect to pick and taint. I'm a Deep Fake sign off by Yobo Morgan Freeman.